In this fairly brief video, I want to clarify the distinction between stocks and flows related to climate change. And to do this, I'm going to use an analogy. Think about a sink. It has a drain hole at the bottom of the sink. There's the surface of the water, and there's a faucet which pours water into the sink and there's some kind of controlling handle on the faucet. You think of the level of water in the sink as being analogous to the, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So there are natural sinks especially plants, which take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and turn it into things like wood and leaves. And there are natural sources of oxygen, the respiration of animals, including humans, is a natural source. But there are lots of man-made, that is, anthropogenic sources. So this is the extra, this analogy to the extra carbon dioxide that's being put into the atmosphere. and what's been happening it actually slowed down more or less in the last 10 years starting around 2010 but essentially between the year 1800 and the year 2010 this flow of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere has been increasing it's it would be as if someone were turning this handle continuing to turn the handle so that more and more and more carbon dioxide was being put into the, the, um, the atmosphere, just like more and more water per second was being put into the sink. Now, it should be rather clear that if that process stopped, and it did stop roughly at the beginning of the Great Recession, so around 2008-2009, uh, so if, you, if before you had your hand on the handle and you were increasing the rate of water flow and now you take your hand off of the handle then the water flow is not going to increase anymore it's it's going to be steady but it's still going to be steady and the water flow is if it's much larger than the sink and it actually is when we're talking about carbon dioxide and climate change then the amount of CO2 is going to continue to increase. The amount of CO2 in the sink here, the amount of water in the sink is going to continue to increase. It's just that it's not going to continue to increase faster and faster. The rate of increase will be constant, but it'll still continue to increase. And so simply not making the problem worse every year isn't enough to start making the problem better. Uh, to start making the problem better, you actually have to start turning the handle in the other direction or even turning it all the way off. So the flow of water is this and the amount of CO2 that is this level is the stock of CO2. Some pretty famous well-educated people do not understand this distinction between flows and stocks when it comes to climate change. Bill Gates is an example of somebody who said climate change is not a, an urgent problem that we have to deal with soon because we have long, uh, long lag times. But um, as we saw in the previous video, long lag times actually make things worse rather than, rather than better. A few years ago, a survey was done of graduate students at MIT. These are graduate students who did not major in atmospheric science. So it's graduate students in all the other departments at MIT, like departments like economics and chemistry and physics and mathematics and things like that. And they were asked, if we stop increasing the rate at which we emit greenhouse gases, and start to keep that rate of emissions constant, will that be enough to cure the greenhouse gas problem? 
And the majority of these MIT graduate students said yes. The answer, as you can see from our analogy here with the water, is no. Simply keeping the flow steady instead of increasing it is not going to fix the problem. So it's not enough to have constant emissions of greenhouse gases. We need to have smaller and smaller emissions of greenhouse gases. Indeed, as we discussed with the book on The World Without Us, even if we stop the flow of greenhouse gases tomorrow, the lag times are such that global mean temperature is still going to increase for a millennium. So this distinction between stocks and flows is a pretty is a pretty important one to understand the difficulties of solving global warming.